So we're going to talk about kangaroos today, which is amazing. There, there's so much to learn about kangaroos. I just thought that they were like hoppy, fun little creatures. As it turns out, they are hoppy, swimmy creatures that do lots of other really amazing things. Um, so uh, a kangaroo is a marsupial. Uh, and a marsupial is a mammal that the babies are born, like, not 100% done yet. So they need a little more time. So when they're born, they crawl from, um, uh, they crawl from being born up to their mom's pouches. And then when they get to the pouch, they hang out in the pouch for like a little bit, a little bit longer. Sometimes a couple weeks, sometimes a couple months, depending on the marsupial. But I will definitely tell you lots more about the pouch because I know that is what we're so interested in when we think about kangaroos and, and how do you live in a pouch and, and things like that. Um, kangaroos are part of the uh, macropod family, which means that they have, it means large foot. Um, and in the PowerPoint presentation that I show you later, I'm going to show you how big their feet are. Which I don't think I actually realized looking at a kangaroo how much of it was foot, which is, which is pretty neat. Um, and so with their amazing feet, not only do they jump around a whole bunch, uh, obviously they do lots of hopping, but they also will lean back on their tails and they'll thump the earth in case there's like a predator around to like tell all their friends, hey, something's going on, uh, which is a pretty neat way of, uh, of chatting with their friends. Um, there are uh, there's four different types of kangaroos that live in Australia. There is a red kangaroo, an eastern gray kangaroo, a western gray kangaroo, and an antelopine kangaroo. Not sure why they made all of those like very descriptive easy names, except for the last one, but it's fine. Sometimes things are hard to pronounce, we get through it. So when we think about a kangaroo, we think about having like Two little hands in the front, sort of like a T-Rex. Little hands, but like they're, they're pretty jacked up. They have a lot of muscles. They do a lot of things with their hands. But we really think about their back legs and their tail. Um, their, their back legs are super, super strong. And again, in this PowerPoint, I'll like show you all the really cool parts of it. Um, and they have this huge tail that they lean back on sometimes if they, uh, if they need to kick a predator away or uh, kick away. Um, but this massive tail that they use for balance and they use to, to hop and, uh, and you know, just be kangaroos, they actually, it gets in the way if they want to go backwards. So they actually, they can hop really well, but they can't ever go backwards. Another really cool thing is when they are moving forward, they can't take little steps. They can only hop forward, but then they're really good swimmers. And when they're swimming, their feet can move independently. So they can't move independently on land, their feet, uh, because they're under such tremendous um, hopping pressure. Uh, but when they get in the water, they can, oh my gosh, there are, there's a baby in space. Babies in space. <laughs> um, so, so there were a lot of people that asked why do kangaroos hop, and the 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 reason for it. So they're they're built for hopping. They're super good at hopping. That's the only thing they can really do. They can't they can't walk, but the reason that they hop is it is so. It's the reason that all animals kind of do anything. It's super efficient. So. Evolution means that animals are really good at camouflage. They're really fast. They're really good at hiding. Um, oh, there's little Joey. I see a little friend in a pouch. Um, <laughs> thanks, Harlow. Um, so, so whenever you see an animal and you go, why is it doing that specific thing? That's because it's really efficient and it's really good at that one thing. And it's actually better for the kangaroos to hop than to run. They save all kinds of energy. It's the most efficient way to get around uh, by, by hopping, which is, which is pretty neat. And they can hop super fast. So sometimes kangaroos, they're herbivores. They do a lot of grazing. They eat different grasses and fungi and shrubs and things like that. Um, Cadence, I love your teeth. They look great. <laughs> 
Um, so they are herbivores. They eat uh, all, all, all things grassy. And so they will, you'll sometimes see them, but they lean forward and with their front paws, they kind of like go through the grass and chump, 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 like, uh, like you know, cows or manatees or other her herbivores. Oh my gosh, Michelle is a kangaroo. You guys are into this. I am liking it. Um, now, so they'll go forward and they'll eat the grass that way, but, and so they can, you know, they can go pretty slow, but if they need to, um, if they need to hop around, if they want to like go see their friends, if they're getting away from a predator, um, they can hop. Their normal pace is about 25 kilometers an hour, which is about 16 miles an hour, but they, if they really want to get away, the fastest that they can go is 70 kilometers an hour or 43 miles an hour. So that's if they're like sprinting, trying to get away from predators. Um, and the things that like their predators are generally things like dingoes or foxes and some young joeys, uh, there's really big uh, eagles and, and hawks that, uh, that they need to hop away from. So, so and then some uh, kangaroos can hop for like a sustained sustain speed of about 40 kilometers or 25 miles. So that's not quite a sprint, but they're still, they're still getting, they're getting out of there. And so that's pretty fast. And it means that they're so efficient doing that, they're able to, you know, for like a long time, be a distance runner at 40 kilometers, 25 miles an hour. It's all because all the mechanisms in their feet and in their legs make them, make them able to go pretty fast, which is cool. Um, now, a group of kangaroos is called a mob, which is also pretty nice. And they are nocturnal. So in the slideshow that I show you, you will see some kangaroos laying down because it gets real hot in Australia where they live. So during the, uh, during the day when it's really hot, they like to just lounge around, have some time. And then in the twilight and at night, they'll go out um, uh, and <laughs> search for grasses, hunt for grasses, yum, 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 which is pretty cool. Um, now, let's get into this pouch talk because it is neat. This is what makes marsupials marsupials. It is cool. So when a kangaroo is born, they're about the size of a jelly bean. They're real small, 2.5 centimeters, just little like little guys. So they're born and then what they do, they're completely hairless and they crawl up from, uh, from the bottom of their mom to, uh, to the pouch. They go into the pouch and their mom has four different teeth that have milk in them. Now the reason she has four, which is super interesting, and the moms out there will go, what? Kangaroos will have more than one joey in their pouch. Now I didn't know this at all. I thought it was just like, one joey was always happening. But what will happen is there will be a small jelly bean and then there will be like a, a bigger joey that like that looks like a kangaroo, like the one that Harlow showed us, which is like, I'm furry and real cute. Um, and so that's really interesting. So there, there's always like, there's a little one that's just, uh, that's uh, uh, developing still. Um, sucking on milk and then there's one that can like get out of the pouch, do a little hop and then come back and have some more milk. Um, they are mammals and so they, they do have milk from their moms. Now it takes about four months from when the tiny little jelly bean kangaroo crawls up into its mom's pouch to be able to jump out of the pouch again, have some hops, figure things out and um, at 10 months they're good to go. They leave the pouch and they're like independent um, adult kangaroos at that time that can, um, they don't need any more milk. We'll just eat grass, which is pretty nice. I'm sure they really like that. Now the pouch itself is really cool. So when I, when we think about kangaroos, we normally kind of think about what we see in cartoons and we just think it's like, you know, just like a pocket. I actually have not a kangaroo here, but we sort of think it's like a pocket that like it will like jump in and jump out and it's kind of like getting everywhere and how do they keep it clean? As it turns out, mom kangaroos have like quite a lot of muscles. Oh my gosh, did you draw a kangaroo? Yeah, looking good. Oh, and me. 
Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> so mom kangaroos have like quite a few muscles um, all around their abs and all around their pouches, which makes it pretty neat. So it's not like it just like hangs open. When uh, Joey uh, wants to get into the pouch, it will jump in and then she will constrict her muscles and it will mean the Joey is like nice and tight and safe. So if a mom kangaroo needs to get away from predators, if she just wants to like, you know, go on a trip, take her babies to like a watering hole, then she can, um, she can really like uh, flex those muscles and make sure her baby is nice and uh, her joey's nice and safe in the pouch. And then, and she can do the same thing if she only has like a small baby in there and there's no reason to, uh, to have the baby jump in and out. Instead of having the pouch like this, it's kind of a bit smaller and it's kind of like a hole that you'd have to like really get into. And you know, that's to make sure that the baby is safe from any kind of bugs or any sort of dirt or things like that. Um, I did look up if it's really like gross inside a pouch. As it turns out, because they're able to constrict that, that skin and those muscles, the pouch stays like pretty clean, to be honest, for a wild animal. Um, but the mom, all the moms out there will love this as well, the moms do wash out their own pouches and they do that by like licking the pouches clean. So, you know, you have a baby in there for about four months and uh, every day you just, you know, do, do some cleaning, do some, uh, uh, some maintenance to make sure that it's, it's really nice. Um, and to make sure like no dirt and things accumulate, you know, like you have like a little baby there, you want to make it like a, a really nice home for, for the Joey, which is pretty cute. Um, and as you've probably seen, like when Joey's are, uh, four months old and they're able to jump in and out of the pouch, then she's able to relax those muscles, create kind of like a hole so they can like get in, scoot around, do a little bit of cartwheels and then like get their heads out of the pouch, which is uh, cute. Now I also looked up how big these pouches actually are. So a four, four month to 10 month old kangaroo gets pretty big. So like, could a human fit in a kangaroo pouch? I don't know. So I looked it up and for a human to fit into a kangaroo pouch, the kangaroo would need to be four meters tall and about 600 kilograms. So no, no, we would not fit in a kangaroo pouch. We would need to have a giant monster kangaroo um, so it's probably better for us to, you know, not, not try to get into the, the pouch. Um, like I said, the, the, so moms, uh, mom kangaroos can have three babies at a time. She will have, uh, she'll have, uh, one like embryo and then she'll have one really small jelly bean in the pouch and then she'll have one that is ready to hop around. Now she has those four teats in the pouch so they can all have milk and the really amazing thing about these animals is each one has a different composition of milk. So young babies need to have a really fatty milk and older babies need to have more proteins and middle babies need to have carbs. And so based on the size of the baby, um, the mom's body just knows the type of milk to make, which I think is so cool. It's so amazing. They're such, such neat little guys. Um, there are about 30 million um, kangaroos that are living in Australia right now now. Some of them are endangered um, because there are the four different types um, and they're endangered because there's less space for them. Um, so again, like we've always talked about, it's really important to have old growth forests. It's really important to have grasslands that they live in. They don't really live in the forest. They like to eat grass. There are some that like to have, uh, that like to eat uh, funguses and shrubs and things like that. It's just important to have wild areas um, and just really support having parks and wild areas for, um, for kangaroos and every animal to live in. So kangaroos can leap super, super high. They can leap more than nine meters, like across in a single bound, kind of like Superman. Um, and like, how much is that? I'm not really good at knowing like how big a meter is and then how big is nine? I don't know. 
Uh, oh, cool. I know. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Oh, well, did you know that it is six 10 year olds head to toe? That is how big nine meters would be, which is pretty. Oh my gosh, look, you drew a jelly. And so think about like how big that would be. That is like, yeah, six 10 year olds is just like one jump from, from a kangaroo. And they can also jump real high as well. The, ver the highest jump a kangaroo has ever done was seven meters, which is 23 feet, which is three like real, like pretty tall humans laying in a line, which is like very big. That's very, <laughs> so someone did ask, um, we know that kangaroos can jump, but can they fly? And I would say, you know, kind of, they kind of can fly. So this is a volunteer that, uh, that I worked with before. And these kangaroos, like I said, they, they do a lot of their eating food at twilight and, uh, and at night. So when it is nice and hot, uh, in the Australian day, they like to have just, just a lay down, just having some time, but you can see like, how big they are and like how like you know they can jump pretty far but they can jump really far with how big they are an abacus cool now here is my cool way of showing you how how kangaroos jump so so well so the orangey red line is actually how big a kangaroo's feet are which i think I did not know they were so big. So you can see what I always thought was a kangaroo foot. That's just their toes. They are incredibly amazing, amazingly long feet. That's why they are, they're, they're of the long foot. And then, so that's all their foot. And then the yellow line there, that's how big their Achilles tendon is. So we all have Achilles tendons and they're right in the back of our ankles, right above our heels. They're kind of like little squidgy tendons. They are exactly squidgy tendons. Um, and the reason that we can jump is they are, um, they're, they're under a little bit of pressure and they're, they're really squishy. Now ours are like, you know, just the size of our ankle, pretty small, and we can jump pretty well. So the, the kangaroos have huge Achilles tendons, and this is why they're so good at jumping. They're so, so big. It's also the reason that they can't, they can only jump, they can't walk, because these Achilles tendons are always under pressure. They're always really, really bouncy. Um, so walking would be really difficult, sort of like walking on like a trampoline. If you were to jump on a trampoline, you'd feel like a kangaroo. If you were trying to walk on a trampoline, that's how a kangaroo would feel. Wouldn't love it. Um, and then the blue circle is how big their, uh, their quads are. So they're really big leg muscles. So they're really able to put tons of power in jumping. So you can see this guy um, doing a very lovely job at showing us how, uh, how, how good they are at jumping. And you can see that tail as well that's working as like a counterbalance. So they're able to really push down into their feet through their Achilles tendons um, with all the muscles and then bounce very, very far. Uh, and here, this is very like the, the picture of the um, kangaroo that Harlow has. Just, uh, it shows you a, this is probably like a ten, nine or 10 month old uh, Joey hanging out uh, in the pouch. So you see it just lo looks like it's mom, just a little bit smaller. And you can see that the pouch is kind of like a hammock. Like it really gets to, uh, gets to be really comfortable for, for the wee baby. And then, so these are a bunch of different kangaroos. Um, all of these kangaroos are in rehabilitative care um, at a wildlife center in Australia, obviously. Um, and so the way that kangaroos need to develop as babies is they need to be kind of like squished in a pouch. This is how they work. Uh, we all develop differently. They really like to be squished. And so these ones that, um, that unfortunately have to be helped without their mom, these ones are put into pouches and at the rehabilitation center, that is how, that's how they're helped. Uh, rehabilitators and vets and vet techs will wear like a, a backwards backpack almost and uh, put the kangaroo in and that's how they develop, which is 
Very, very cute. So you can see um, the, the one on the side and then in the middle um, doesn't really have a lot of hair. And then you can see the one on, uh, well, it's the right for me, but the one with hair, you can see has hair. And uh, you can see it's just developing uh, a little bit more and looks more, more like a kangaroo, less like, less like a baby. <laughs> Uh, and this is another uh, volunteer that we have uh, had at the, the center in Australia. So right behind her shoulder, you can see one of the pouches that the, the veterinarians or the volunteers would wear to help the babies develop. And you can see that she's um, just having a cuddle because, you know, babies like cuddling is pretty cute. Uh, but you can see this one is probably... Um, uh, probably about five months old. It's not ready to, to leave the pouch just yet. It's still little, but it does have like quite a lot of fur. It looks very kangaroo-y, um, but is, is very, very cute. So those are my kangaroo pictures, and it is time for y'all to ask some questions. Uh, oh, excellent. Look at that kangaroo in mid-jump. That looks great. Yeah, oh, look at that it. kangaroo. Whoa! Excellent. I'm very close joey. to the camera. I feel like a robin. It has a joey in it. It does have a joey in it. That looks great. Are you a Yes. Um, yes, Harlow. Um, what, um, what uh, food eats kangaroos? Uh, uh, who, who eats kangaroos? Stop. Yeah. Yeah, so the predators of the kangaroo are uh, dingoes and uh, some foxes. And unfortunately, um, it, one of the reasons that some kangaroos are uh, endangered is people, because uh, people will hunt them or people will um, uh, uh, make less space for them and things like that. But in the wild, it's generally like dingoes and foxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a hand up. Yes. yes. Um why are kangaroos so, so why are kangaroos so big and they why can get around they, so quick why are they so big and can get around so quick so they can get around so quick because they're such excellent hoppers with the with they have uh, such big feet such big leg muscles they're able to just bound 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 and the reason they're so big is they don't really have um uh, it, they, they want to be bigger because if they were really, really small, they'd have a lot of predators. So it's better for them to eat lots and lots of grass and be the size that they are. And then there's, once you get to a full size, like big red kangaroo, like the very first picture you saw, that one, there's not a lot of predators. So it's, uh, it's happy to be that size. You can just hop around. Oh. <laughs> Daniel. Do, do kangaroos live in the rainforest? Oh, that's a very good question. So, yes and no. There are some that live in the rainforest. Um, there, so most kangaroos live in Australia, but there are tree kangaroos that live in Papua New Guinea, and they live in the rainforest. They are very cool. Uh, and that's actually a really great question because all kangaroos used to live in the rainforest. They used to all live in trees. And then when Australia got less and less rainforesty, they decided to come down from the trees over millions of years and then live in the grasslands. So, so yeah, prehistoric kangaroos all lived in the rainforest. Excellent question. Why are they called? kangaroos? That, that is an excellent question. So they're called kangaroos because um, it is sort of what the Aborigine people in Australia call them. So the Aboriginals of Australia um, have a very specific name for a gray kangaroo and it's like the way that it's pronounced is kangaroo. And so the way that the very first um, explorers went to Australia and they looked at a kangaroo and they were like, what is that thing? Um, when they heard the, like the uh, Aborigine first, uh, uh, first people's language, they said, that sounds like kangaroo. 
And they said, I bet you all those things are called those same things. We're just going to call them kangaroos. We went to Australia, and last year we actually saw kangaroos hopping. What? Was it amazing? Yeah, we saw, we saw, we went, we used to live there, so we saw a ton of kangaroos when we lived there, and koalas. Oh, that is so cool. So, yeah, sometimes, when, so when the babies are really small, when they first crawl up into the pouch, they don't leave the pouch for, like, four months. So sometimes they do a pee, and they do a wee in the pouches, and the moms do have to lick that clean. It's very, very small, but it does show you how much moms love you, because they will clean all these things. And this is the thing with <laughs> all of your moms right here. They probably won't lick you clean, which you're probably very happy about. Um, yeah. But they do, moms do all kinds of gross things to make sure you guys are clean and happy. Yeah, so when the joeys are first born, they are two and a half centimeters. They're really, they're so small that kangaroo scientists call them jelly beans. Just little jelly beans. And they're little jelly beans that like they crawl all the way to the pouch, which I think is important. Like sometimes I'm too lazy to get out of bed in the morning, but they can crawl all the way. It's great. Um, and then when they are, um, when they're four months old and they're ready to uh, get out of the pouch and, and start eating grass, but they still stay with their moms, they will be at, and uh, all the kangaroos are different sizes, so they're about one third the size of their mom. So like they're they're quite little, but then with all of the milk that they're drinking um, all the time, they get they get pretty fast. So in ten months, they're able to be like the size of like almost a full size kangaroo, and they can they can hop away. 